Hello and welcome to Email Security in Office 365. Today we're going to walk through the different features that are used to secure an organization's intellectual property when sending email. The features we'll cover include data loss prevention, encrypted email, and rights management. So let's get started by taking a look at data loss prevention and its configuration. I'm currently in the Exchange Admin Center. If I click on Compliance Management and then Data Loss Prevention, we'll see here a list of different policies that have already been put in place. These policies can be created by an administrator by simply coming in and clicking on the New button. And you can create new policies from existing template. You can import policies from outside your organization or in create them internally and you can create a new custom policy and then apply the rules later on. Let's take a look at the PCI credit card policy. We can see here some basic information in terms of the name, there's no description, it's currently enabled and the mode is currently set to enforce. You can also set it for testing purposes so that it's not completely enforcing it but it could notify the user that they're sending information that is sensitive. All the DLP policies also have rules associated with them. So if I click on the rules, you can see this policy happens to have two separate rules. One rule for when sending credit card information to external recipients and one rule for sending credit card information to internal. Let's click edit on this. Here you'll see that we've got the rule when it's applied here we can see it's based on the recipient being located outside the organization we can also see that the message contains sensitive information so there are about 51 predefined sensitive information types some of the sensitive information types include credit card numbers social security numbers basically any financial data or personally identifiable information healthcare information once we have identified what the rules should be applied to. Now we'll determine what to do. So here you can see we're going to send a policy tip and block the message. We are giving the user the ability to override. We can easily turn off the ability to override. So this is all very configurable. And we're going to generate a report and send it to our compliance officer. So let's see this in action and send an email that contains credit card information. I'll send it to an internal user. And here you can see the user receives a policy tip saying that this email contains sensitive information. If I hover over the tip, we'll actually see that the sensitive information type that was captured is the credit card number. We did provide this user with the ability to override this with the business justification, but again, we don't have to allow that. So that's one component of DLP and Exchange Online. Another part is what's called document fingerprints. The concept here is basically there are forms that are sent around the organization. Those forms should be identified as containing sensitive information. Exchange gives you that ability by creating what's called a document fingerprint. So if you have a form where individuals are filling out information and then sending that around an email, upload a form without any of the content filled in, and later on when someone goes to send that form, they would be prompted with that information. Let's see a document fingerprint in action. If I come into my email, I have a form called patient registration template, and then that's the one that I've uploaded for the document fingerprint. So now if I were to try and send the completed version of this out, you can see a, the user receives a policy tip saying that there's sensitive information. The document has been highlighted. If I hover over this, we can see that the sensitive information that's been identified is the patient registration form. The next component of email security in Office 365 that we're going to cover is encrypted email. Encrypted email in Exchange Online is implemented through DLP policies. I've got one here called User Encryption. This one's pretty straightforward because what I'm providing the end users is the ability to come in and manually decide to encrypt any content that 
they deem necessary. You could automate this similar to how we have rules for credit cards and sending those out as information. We could do the same thing with email, with encryption, and this would give us the ability to automatically encrypt email. But right now I've got this set so that you can see here, if the subject of the body contains the word encrypt, it's going to encrypt the email. So let's send over an encrypted email. So because I have the word encrypt in my subject line and I send it over, when Katie receives this, she will have an encrypted email. So let's go over and view that email message in Katie's mailbox. And you can see here, Katie receives an email from Garth. And inside of this message, you can see nowhere in this message do we see the body that I had typed out earlier. What we do see is this was an encrypted message sent by Garth. To view this, I need to open up the attachment and I need to sign in my email address that this was sent to for viewing it. So let's open up the attachment. And again, just more information on viewing this email. Here I can log in. If I don't want to log in, I can actually click on this link here and get a one-time passcode to view this email. I'm going to log in. And I'm prompted with two options here. I can log in with my Microsoft account or I can log in my organizational account. Because this is an Office 365 account, I actually have an organizational account set up. So I'll log in with that. And here you can see Katie is now viewing the email that was sent encrypted by Garth. She can also reply to the email and interact with it at this point. So the last part of email security in Exchange Online has to do with rights management. Administering rights management inside of Office 365 is done at the tenant level. So if I go back up to the admin portal and I click on service settings, you'll see here on the left hand side we have rights management. And now I can click on manage. And your administrator would have to turn on rights management. By default it would be deactive, right now mine is activated. There's also additional configurations if you wanted more advanced rights management capabilities you would have to set up an Azure subscription. By default, the rights management that's provided with Office 365 will provide three email policies that can be applied. And we'll take a look at those right now. So if you wanted to have more than that, you'd have to activate your Azure subscription. If we come back into Garth's email, we'll click on new. If I click on options, you'll see I have the ability to set the following permissions on here. Do not forward, confidential, and confidential view only. So forward, as you would think, whoever receives this email cannot forward it, but they also cannot print or copy it. The confidential policy will only allow internal users to open this email. If it is sent to an external user, forwarded to an external user, they would try and open up the email. They would be prompted that there was rights management, and they would find out that they would not have permissions to view the email. And confidential view only here. Again, we could send it internally. If a user tries to open it, they would not be able to modify the actual email itself. So let's send this over to Katie. So now let's go look over at Katie's email. And we'll notice here that Katie's email has this red icon with a white line through it. This is telling her that this is a rights protected email. If we click on it, we can see the policy that was actually applied to it. Let me open up the full email just so you can see everything. You can see here, she cannot reply. She can't forward. Print is disabled. And if we select any content in here, she can't copy the content from the email either. So this concludes our introduction to email security in Office 365. While we only scratched the surface of the possibilities, we at least did touch on the different components involved in securing email.